Did you miss me, Mr. Goat? Today on Coffee Break Tennis, it's the return of the king, the king of clay, that is. Rafa Nadal is back at Davis Cup action, and he looks pretty darn good. Also, Novak Djokovic got rid of his other coach. Of course, you know him as the world's most handsome man, Radek Stepanik. We've got news on Eugenie Bouchard, who's uh, fallen off the face of the earth. And this, the best part, what I'm most excited about, saving it for the end of the show, so stick around. I happen to find this while trying to find paperwork to do my taxes. 2017 preview issue, Andy Murray. Can he hold off Novak Djokovic in 2017? Can't wait to read what the tennis experts and geniuses in this magazine had to say about 2017, how it was all going to go down. I'll give you a hint. They got it totally wrong. Today's episode of Coffee Break Tennis is brought to you by Will Hamilton and Fuzzy Yellow Balls. Fuzzy Yellow what? Fuzzy Yellow Balls, the online tennis instruction website that basically invented the idea of teaching tennis to people on the internet. So hey, if you're a tennis player, you gotta check out what Will Hamilton has put together for you over Fuzzy Yellow Balls. They get the Singles Players Playbook. That's right, they're gonna go with you and build you a custom-made playbook of plays that you can run for your suited strengths in the tennis court, guaranteeing less errors, winning more matches. Uh, right now, they've got a new video out, totally free video series. is gonna help you with your singles gameplay. They got a new video out all about the volley. So click the link down below in the description, or you can just simply type into your web browser, tennis.fuzzyyellowballs.com forward slash coffee break. That way they know I sent you. Today's video in the free three video series that Will Hamilton and Fuzzy Yellow Balls put together for all of you tennis players out there is all about the volley. Which of these three types of volleys do you struggle with the most? On a high volley, do you tend to hack it down and put it in the net? On a high volley, do you tend to hit it way long? Mr. Goat. <laughs> Mr. Goat, did I startle you? Do you miss them long in the fence? And on low volleys, do you tend to pop them up and give your opponent an easy sitter to smash? Well, if any of that applies to you, guess what? Will Hamilton has got the fix. He's got the best volley tip he's ever heard in his life in today's free video. It's all part of your singles playbook training, the three-part series that they get. Like I said, click the link down below or just go to singles.fuzzyyellowballs.com forward slash coffee break. And you'll want to check out today's video just to see the guest coach, a Grand Slam champion, mystery, surprise, intrigue, guest host. Got to click over there and see what they got. All right, let's get into the show. I'm going to go through the stack of news really fast, and then we will do this doozy we got here. Really looking forward to that one. I'm uh, got some strong opinions on what the uh, geniuses wrote in there. Tennis, Nadal. Tennis. Nadal to face Sverev with Spain's fate in his hands. That's right, Spain is down 2-1. to one. They lost the doubles, and Faru, David Ferrer, he lost in singles to Sasha Sverev. And Rafa took it to Cole Pickle. Philip Cole Pickle, Cole Schreiber took him down in three sets. Was anyone expecting something different? I mean, I know I've put it out there that I don't think Rafa will hold on the number one ranking because I don't think he's going to win every single clay tournament again. Although he could. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to speak with absolute certainty like the geniuses did in this magazine. I'll give you a hint. They didn't think Federer would win any majors except for Herr Bodo. Peter Bodo, Herr Bodo, he said Federer maybe could win Wimbledon. Maybe. World number one Rafa Nadal will have to defeat young German star Alexander Zverev on Saturday to keep Spain in the Davis Cup after Germany took a shock 2-1 lead after a marathon doubles triumph. Guess who's playing? Tim Putz from Germany. And of course, Jan Leonard Struff. Struff! <laughs> Is it Jan Leonard Struff? Is it Jan Leonard Struff? We'll never know. Unless he comes onto the show. We'd also love to have Andre Agassi come on the show to talk about his coaching with uh, Novak Djokovic. But I don't think uh, Mr. Goat could whip up the hors d'oeuvres fast enough. I've under I understand at parties, Agassi really likes to eat the little finger foods. A lot of them. I don't know if we could handle that here. We'll do our best to accommodate his needs. Nadal, 31, marked his comeback on Friday after more than two months on the sidelines with a hip injury by seeing off Philip Cole Pickle, Cole Schreiber in his opening singles match. Now has to repeat his magic against Sverev, 11 years his junior. He's a young man. It's a young man's game. Nadal is on a record run of 23 successive wins in the Davis Cup, having not lost since 2005. Unbelievable. 
And in other Davis Cup news, the Frenchman Nicolas Mahou and Pierre-Hugues Herbert put defending champions Franck Reich 2-1 up against Italian with a 6-4, 6-3, 6-1 win over Fabio Fognanai Fonini and Simone Bolilli, the guy with the skull on his shirt. Luca Pui, who is our next story, just happens to be our next story. World number 11 will have the chance to clinch a semifinal spot for France for the third time in four years when he faces Fonini in the first of Sundays, blah, blah, blah. Nashville, uh, John Isner, Sam Querrey lifted the United States 2-0. Right now, they're playing the doubles. Uh, looks like they just took a lead in the third set. Uh, they just broke, I think, Jack Sock. The TV went out. But uh, we had uh, Ryan Harrison and Jack Sock. Uh, look like they're going to wrap it up for the U.S. And of course, they're playing Belgium who were the finalists last year. Remember, they are in the finals. Belgium, who are playing without world number 10, David Goffin, don't have a player ranked in the top 100 in their lineup. Listen to this one. Isner needed three hours and 14 minutes to dispose of world number 319. Joris Delor, 6-3, World number 14 query beats world 110th ranked Ruben Bimmelman's 6-1-7-6-7-5 in a two-hour long second rubber. Ryan Harrison, Jack Sock, even in doubles, far outrank their opponents. Those guys, I didn't even realize, they're top 30 in the world. So, comment below. Very curious to hear. What does everyone think about Rafa? Uh, it's a strong start. It's a good showing. Um, in fact, let's play a couple highlights from the match in case you didn't see it. Oof, why you have And then look at Rafa wrap this one up with a, uh, not the match, but he wraps this set up with a nasty slice that just gets a little, I don't know what just happened, error from Philip Kultpickel Kohlschreiber. Oof. Why not? Why not? Why not? Mmm, that's good. Estaba atento ahí Rafa, esta vez a la dejada. Estira el brazo con Rever que llega, vaya punto. Y al final se lleva nada. Ahora sí, acabó la historia. Dos horas y 33 minutos de partido. So there you go, that's Rafa. Rafa looks good. Rafa looks strong. Uh, Mr. Mr. Goat's asleep now, but earlier he said, let's see uh, Rafa beat. Philip Kohlschreiber in straight sets in best out of five at Wimbledon. Yeah, you know, the, the, Kohlschreiber is a great player. Uh, Rafa has more firepower than him. He's going to beat him in most places and most surfaces. Maybe on grass, Kohlschreiber. I think that's the one time he did win. I'm pretty sure Kohlschreiber beat Nadal one time on grass, I think. Alexander Sasha Sverev, if you're hoping, if you're one of those people out there hoping because you want Rafa to fail, I know a lot of people are Rafa haters out there. Uh, I know some people are such big fed heads that they'll hate on Rafa and hope they'll cross their fingers for Rafa to lose. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I'll I'll cross my fingers for Rafa to lose against Roger every time. But uh, I wouldn't jump ahead of myself and say that Sverev is going to uh, whoop up on the doll. You know, Sverev's kind of like a curios almost to me. You, you just never quite know what you're going to get with him. We know that wonderful things are possible, but you never know which Sasha will show up. Obviously, uh, uh, curios that's kind of... It's a little insulting to the guy, actually. I, I take Sasha's mental game. I like it a little better than Kyrgios. Anyways, interesting to see. Keep your eyes on it. Comment below what you think about Rafa. Uh, what this means. You know, is, is Rafa going to come and dominate everything? Everyone's got an opinion. You know, there's not a lot of uh, big-time uh, clay court, slow court players around. You know, Djokovic and Murray. Uh, well, Djokovic might be there at the French Open. But yeah, is anyone going to stop? Oh, by the way, we got a Djokovic stuff next. But let's go to Luca Puy. Frenchman Luca Puy, this is from uh, Reuters. Frenchman Luca Puy threatened to boycott the Davis Cup should the internet threaten to boycott. Yeah, yeah, right. Threaten to boycott should this thing happen like a year from now. Not exactly a threat. Should the Davis Cup International Tennis Federation, the ITF, rip the format up and replace it with a one-week World Cup style in a single city? Uh, asked if he would boycott the new-look Davis Cup, Puy, who earned Franck Reich, or France, the winning, you know, I met Lucas, the other Lucas, not this one, in Miami. Happy Easter! Happy Easter! 
And I said, Frankreich, which is German for France. And he said, no, 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 don't say that. <laughs> Come on, it's like a hundred years ago. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Mr. Goat says, I shouldn't say anything in German because I sound like an idiot. Ooh, Jim Courier. Jim Courier's got a new haircut. Looks good. Luca Pui, if the reform goes through, yes, because it would just be an exhibition. And I don't represent France to play an exhibition. So the big idea is to have this one week, every country, uh, Davis Cup of Palooza in November after the season's over. So already we're going to still have the problem where a lot of people skip it. I would imagine, right? At least the top players, the top eight players who just played the WTF What the Fudge World Tour Finals tournament for the top eight players of the year. I imagine they wouldn't want to go play this thing right away. The new Davis Cup would replace the current 16 team, 16 team, that's a tongue, tongue twister, 16 team world group format in which ties are played on a home or away basis over weekends during the course of the year with the final in November. Pui went on to say... I don't see the point in going if the tournament is played the last week of November, arguing that it would hamper the players' preparations for the following season. Now, now they already are doing the final at the end of November. But the big difference here would be, you know, everything's out of the way. It's just the final at the end of November. If you do, And so if you're in the final, you're going to make the trip. But if they do the new format, everyone goes at the end of the week because it's first round, second round, all the way to the final, baby. Be interesting to see what happens with that. The ITF board will vote on this proposal in August. And then they told us that uh, U.S. Open champion Marin Cilic, he loves the idea. Of course, who cares what Cilic thinks about the Davis Cup idea? Not me. Djokovic! Novak Djokovic is doing everything he can to right the ship in 2018. Is he? This is from the AP. No, this is from Tennis.com, where the tennis geniuses... Right, the people who wrote that magazine that predicted uh, bad things for Federer in 2017. One of, one of those people said it was the end. It was the end for Federer in 2017. I never thought that. I thought Federer would win Wimbledon. That's when I, that point where those bozos put the, those, I mean, distinguished editors and tennis enthusiasts over at Tennis.com, around the same time that they made their predictions, I was saying, look, Roger's going to get his game going, see what he's got in Australia. By the time Wimbledon comes, you better believe that he'll be ready to go and he'll be winning it or coming at least very close to winning it. Novak Djokovic is done working with Andre Agassi and most handsome man alive, Radic Stepanek, after the latest in a series of coaching changes for the 12-time major champion who has gone nearly two full years without winning. We know. Djokovic announced Wednesday on his website, so this is the, this is the only thing new... Since I last talked about this, there's really been nothing. Um, the private relationship with Stepanik was and will remain great, and Novak has enjoyed work. This is from the Djokovic website. Novak has enjoyed working with him and learning from him. He remains grateful and appreciative of all the support he has received from Radic Stepanik during the last period. Then, Agassi doesn't get a nice little paragraph. He just gets, the cooperation between Novak and Andre Agassi has also ended. You're a bad man. You're a very bad man. Very interesting there. A slight towards Agassi. But it's weird that he got rid of Stepanik right away. I guess uh, I guess he's basically realized that the Agassi thing was a big mistake. Uh, maybe getting rid of the original team. Maybe he's wondering if that was a mistake. So who knows what Djokovic is going to do next. Comment below if you know anything more about the story than that. Or if you just have a guess, an idea of what could happen. Because I'm kind of, I'm wondering myself, you know. I wonder what these guys think. Wonder what the the 2017 preview team over at tennis.com. I wonder wonder what they think. We'd love to hear their prediction of Djokovic's future. <laughs> Novak remains focused and eager to come back stronger and more resilient from the long injury break that has affected his confidence in game. The website posting says he is continuously and passionately looking for new and different ways to regain winning form. Of course, that means. Novak is totally lost. He's lost. He's doing everything he can to find his form. Except when we see him play his matches, he's totally lost his form. It's sad. I I really enjoyed watching Djokovic. He's a, a good player and personality and talent to have on the tour. I sure do hope he gets it back together so that we can see Roger beat him. And finally, before I get to the big story, oh, and before I go anywhere else, let me read a, a tweet really quick. 
Here's from Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter or um, Instagram, by the way. <laughs> Our friend in Canada, Mr. Slice. It's your boy, Stephen Bowden. Uh, he put this on Instagram. By the way, you can follow me on Instagram at Coffee Break Tennis, spelled the way we spell it here on YouTube. Um, he said, Will Djokovic, this is his question. So I'm going to ask you the same question. Comment below, Will Djokovic ever compete? Not even, not will he win another major, but will he get to another final in a major again? Will he ever be in a slam final competing? Even if he loses his runner up, that would work. Would he do that? Would he even get there again? Hard to say no, right? Right. Easy to say no if you look at the guy's results this year and all the weird coaching moves and whatnot. Oh, I forgot. It's in the thumbnail. Oh, l- let me read this first. This is from Lieutenant Sweatpants. You can follow me on Twitters, not Instagram, but on the Twitters at Coffee Break Tens, T E N S, like the number 10. Uh, they wouldn't let me fit the whole word over at Twitter because uh, they hate tennis. They don't like tennis and it's unfair. Lieutenant Sweatpants, my prediction for 2021. This is just as accurate. This is this is more accurate. I'm going to say it right now. This will be a more accurate prediction than the majority of what these guys wrote. Guys and gal, one girl, one lady, woman, one female, three males. This is going to be more accurate than that. My prediction for 2021 at age 40, Federer version 3.0 switches to a 100 square inch frame and a two-handed backhand and completes the calendar year Grand Slam. Wouldn't that be something? Comment below if you think that could happen. Eugenie Bouchard turns to Robert Lansdorp. So I I haven't talked about Bouchard in a while because I'm not going to talk about players just because they're very attractive if they don't win anything, right? I mean, I guess we could talk about her because she's been extraordinarily losing a lot. So why am I talking about Jeannie Bouchard? Uh, Because she's going to work with a coach named Robert Lansdorp. So this is very interesting to me because this, first off, this guy's like 80 years old. Uh, I, I understand. I, I did a little reading on him. Last year, he almost died. And then he said, you know what? I'm not going to feed anymore, which is the main reason why we're talking about this guy. He's got the legendary feed. He had the feed that Pete Sampras said, I got to keep working with that feed. That feeds. He, he fed hard. He fed consistent. He could put the feed anywhere in the court. He could zip it in at you so it could really replicate a top-level tennis player hitting a ball at you. Great practice for these players to get grooved and find their rhythm. Ask Nick Terry. It's important to get grooved out there, baby. Jeannie Bouchard probably should be on her way to South America. <laughs> The struggling Canadian who lost to Sarah Arani in the first round. Ooh, like that's such an insult. Hey, Sarah Arani used to be one of the top players, you know, on clay especially, at the Volvo car. I drive a Volvo. Car open Monday in Charleston, South Carolina. Is entered in a lower level event in Colombia next week. Watch out for Cali. I saw this documentary on Netflix. Stay away from there. Also, don't talk to anybody named Pueblo. But Bouchard's not in Colombia. Right now, she's in California consulting with... Sir Robert Lansdorp. It doesn't say sir. His reputation was built years ago on his ability to feed balls perfectly, this is what I was trying to say, and repetitively enabling his players to groove their ground strokes to perfection and build their confidence that way. So the the upshot of this big story is that Eugenie Bouchard is pretty developed, right? She's she's done most of her work on her game. This is a guy who built who who works with you at a younger age. So it's very interesting to see. Plus, it's she's not saying this is her coach. She's just going consulting for, I understand, just a few days. So is this going to work for Eugenie Bouchard? Does anyone out there even care anymore? Does anyone care to see Bouchard do well? We know she's very pretty, so she could be a big star. And when we have a big star who wins and is pretty, it helps grow the sport. It just seems to be the way things have gone in tennis for so long. Uh, anywhere, really. I don't know. It'd be interesting if Eugenie Bouchard showed up, she comes back to tennis, and all of a sudden, she plays just like Lindsay Davenport. Wouldn't that be cool? And finally, the big one. What we've all been waiting for. I'll take some pictures of this magazine. I just happened to find it's lying around. I never even read this. If I would have read this, I would have... I would have always remembered it. And I would have talked about it a long time ago. Australian Open Preview. Prediction. Champion. Andy Murray. The Tennis Roundtable. Here are our noted experts. Herr Bodo, the editor-at-large. He says 2017 Player of the Year will be Andy Murray. The biggest breakthrough will be Luca Pui. And the biggest disappointment will be 
Born to Chorch. Uh, Chorch was a little disappointing. Uh, Ed McGrogan, the senior editor. Ed McGrogan is our second panelist here. The uh, senior editor of Tennis.com. Tennis Magazine, that's what this is, right? Yeah, this is Tennis Magazine, Tennis.com, it's all the same thing. Ed McGrogan, who wouldn't know a hockey puck from a tennis ball unless Serena Williams walked over and shoved it down his throat, as she famously threatened at the U.S. Open that one year. Nina Pantic, associate editor, and Stephen Tiger, and Stephen the Tiger Tignor, uh, senior writer. Uh, 2017 Player of the Year for Tignor is Novak Djokovic. Everyone else picked Andy Murray. Uh, biggest disappointment, this is the only thing right in here. And uh, Herr Bodo got a couple things right. The biggest disappointment in 2017 will be Ki Nishikori. What a bold prediction there from Steven the Tiger Tignor. Number one question. Describe Roger Federer's 2017 season. Herr Bodo. Federer's prospects may be better than they have been in a long time unless he's aged overnight or injury became a factor. He showed little signs of slowdown until his knee forced him off the tour in July. Novak Djokovic has hit turbulence. Rafael Nadal is struggling. And Federer has shown that he can handle Andy Murray, whose hot streak will end all right so that's right Bodo got that right he's right about Federer I, I was saying the same thing before saying look uh, Federer's been looking good he's looked good um he wasn't very healthy at Wimbledon last year and he got this close to the final where uh sheer mental intimidation would have led him to another Wimbledon win I think over Andy Murray who's just scared to death of him Ed McGogan. Ooh, this is where it gets good. The 2007 season was the last display of Federer's unquestioned dominance. The 2017 season will be the last display of Federer, period. <laughs> I think this is it. End of his career. Last year we'll ever see him. Still, there will be one moment. One, maybe two. Huh? Maybe two, right? It could happen anywhere of old-fashioned Federer dominance. Where would it be? Where would that one moment be? Eddie McGrogan, Nina in a panic, Pantic. It will be average Federer's year in 2017. And that's thinking positively. Oof, God. At least she's a positive thinker. Federer's 2016 season was his worst in well over a decade, and he only played half of that season. So who knows what kind of match shape he will be in. Still, he's a 17-time Grand Slam champion for a reason. Early in 2016, Federer said that ranking isn't a priority for him, especially if he's not at number one. Hopefully, he takes those words to heart. Thanks, Nina. And finally, Stephen the Tiger Tignor, the senior writer at Tennis.com. In a word, uncharted. Federer will turn 36 in August at that age. Pete Sampras has been retired for five years. That's a good point. How far can Federer's talent and experience take his aging and, for the first time, seemingly fragile body? Don't look too fragile these days. Uh, we'll find out early on whether he can physically hold his own with the ATP's youth movement, which has moved nowhere still i won't be surprised if he reaches major semifinals i'll be surprised if he wins one what if he wins two what if he wins two how surprised would you be then tignor question number two andy murray novak Djokovic, or the field who wins the most majors Herr Bodo. Djokovic's compliments over the past few years dictates that he'll be accorded favorite status sure there's a chance murray will sustain his brilliant form but you could almost concede the australian open to the serb six-time champ blah 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 who's going to beat Djokovic in paris besides nadal uh, how about Vavrinka? Give Wimbledon to Murray or Federer, and the U.S. Open is once again a toss-up. So that is the shining moment of brilliance here from Bodo. He did say give Wimbledon to Murray or Federer. Oh, man, well, M Murray had a good Wimbledon, right? What did he, he lost to Sam Querrey in the semis? Ed McGrogan, who was the furthest off predicting that 2017 was the last year of Federer, which was way wrong. In the Big Four era, once a player grabs the number one ranking, they don't let it go. Murray will maintain his prestigious status with a long-awaited title in Melbourne and a fifth slam victory elsewhere. Sounds more like Federer's year. I don't foresee it. I know some people out there are saying, Matt, it's so easy of you to find this and pick these guys apart. You know what? You know what? I don't care. It's fun. And they deserve it. Who would have, I, what kind of tennis person would make bold predictions like this? I don't foresee a dip in momentum or motivation for Murray. This is his time to bolster an already impressive resume. That said, it's hard to imagine Djokovic not winning one slam this season. Well, you better believe it, baby. <laughs> Nina Pantic, there will be no denying Murray from adding to his total of three Grand Slam titles. <laughs> the Scots major count seems shockingly low after what he accomplished in the second half of 2016. Nadal and Federer will have their moments, but they won't take home the hardware. Uh, they took home all the hardware. Expect Murray to continue his role into the new year, leading the way in slams, but with plenty of pushback from Djokovic. Yeah, Djokovic wasn't pushing nothing. 
Murray and Djokovic will turn. This is from Stephen the Tiger Tignor. Murray and Djokovic will each turn 30 in May. Even Federer and Nadal began to decline by that age. So the prudent answer is the field, which includes Juan Martín del Boltro, Stanislav the Manislav Vavrinka, Milos Raonic, plus Rafa and Roger, who know something about winning slams. Uh, what else do they say? Who will finish top-ranked American? I think they pretty much all said sock. What do you expect from Juan Martín del Potro? Nothing too outrageous there. Do you believe we'll see anything different from Nick Kyrgios? Nothing standing out at me too much. Uh, if anything, I'll have to give Nina and Steven some credit, along with Steady Eddie McGrogan, who says, uh, I'll read his, Had the because tr- this was uh, interesting. You know, I'm, I'm ripping on these tennis.com people who will never hire me now, despite all my tennis knowledge and my excellent writing skills. I'm sure they'll never hire me now, but that's okay. Ed McGrogan who wouldn't know a forehand from his forehead, says the 21-year-old bottomed out in the rankings. Or if Kyrgios had bottomed out in the rankings, he might snap out of his adolescent fog. But he's still ranked a stout number 13. He's not working as hard as he should, but what he's doing is working well enough. The redemption tour will take a rain check. That was pretty interesting because you're right. If, if Kyrgios just totally fell off the face of the earth and made $0 for a little while... Might start taking it more serious. I agree with you. Steady Eddie McGrogan. Have any of these uh, noted calmness, these uh, distinguished tennis experts, have any of them won a Grand Slam? No! Can we get people? Can we, uh, It's tennis.com. Tennis.com. I wish I could buy tennis.com and make a better news site. I guess I should tell people. CoffeeBreakTennis.com is coming. It's going to be a better news service for tennis than we've ever had. Tennis fans have been screwed over for too long. There's no good website to go to get your tennis news. We're finally going to have it. It's called CoffeeBreakTennis.com. I'll let you know more details on it in the future. Uh, It's not going to happen overnight, people, because it's going to be the best. Oh, you having a scratch? A scratch behind your ear, Mr. Goat? Because we saw those are the best tennis writers in the world over at Tennis.com, right? No! These guys know tennis inside and out, right? No! These tennis experts writing in a tennis magazine, they could all beat me in a tennis match, right? No! Get out of here. Hit the music. Mr. Goat, rouse you from sleep. We're going home. We are home. Thanks for watching Coffee Break Tennis. Comment below what you thought of today's show. We'll see you Monday morning to talk about Rafa and Sasha Sverev. See ya!